All right, so we're gonna take my little pointer tool here. If you guys know what that is, you know you can pretty much take apart a whole RV trailer with one of those. Anyway, so purchase this ceramic heater on Amazon. It had good reviews, it was about $30. It has a few simple features on it, like this timer. You can set it from one to 12 hours. And it also has an overheat protection, which we're gonna check a couple of different methods on that. And then it has a thermal limit fuse, and that's another thing for safety. And then it's rated at 350 watts. So if we take a look at the overall construction of this thing, you have kind of the main power button there, which puts it in a standby mode, which then you can turn it on on that faceplate there. You have your timer buttons, and then of course, the temperature control buttons there. Currently it's sitting in the top side of that receptacle. So you can kind of see it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. We'll go ahead and turn on that little on off button on the side there, which you can see that that kind of puts it into the standby mode. You have your on off switch there. And again, your thermostat controls there and then a timer button over in the corner. So we'll turn that guy on, let it start warming up a little bit. We'll get this little heat gun out, kind of take a little temperature reading on kind of what those coils get up to. Those coils can get pretty hot. I've seen uh, the thing measure around 335 degrees on some of those coils, but that doesn't mean that's the air temperature that's actually coming out. Because once you get about an inch away from that thing, you can actually feel the drop off. Um, now if I turn down those temperature control dials again, that's more like a thermostat So and I'll actually display that function here in about a minute or two and how that works And you can kind of see how the timer works there You just kind of set it for however many hours you want it to go or until it reaches a desired temperature in the room And then when you do hit the on off switch when you do turn it off It does turn into a one minute uh, shutdown function so it'll actually turn off the heating coils and it'll just run the fan for about a minute to cool down those coils. And you can see here with the temperature gun that the uh, heating coils are actually cooling down. So during that process, that's that's all that thing is doing. And if you take a look here, I got my watt meter up there, and we're going to take a look at that. We're going to show that it's uh, you know 60 hertz is basically that safe power that everybody likes, that good clean power. So that's basically what the trailer is putting out through. You know being plugged in at the house here so we'll turn this guy on and we'll take another look at those temperatures as it starts to warm up again because i had it sitting at about 75 for a few minutes while i got the rest of this set up and if you take a look at the watts up there you'll see this thing blow past 500 watts for just a few seconds while it kind of gets regulated and, and gets those coils heated up that's where the big power draw is until it kind of settles down and then basically after letting this thing run for a little while i found out that it would kind of hover around 330 watts 335 watts that's kind of where it lives so just shy of the 350 is stated so it's still not bad though it still did a good job of heating up the bathroom very well and so again if i turn this uh temperature dial down the thermostat it'll actually shut off once it reaches the desired temp. The room that I'm in is about 67 degrees, so it should shut off roughly around there, and you can check out the wattage up there, and you'll see where the shutoff goes here in just a second. And you can see there where it actually clicks off, and the watts start to drop, and basically the fan will still run again to do that same kind of a cool-off process, so until it kicks back on, um, once the temperature gets cold enough, then, you know, Anyway, so we'll turn up the temperature again, and you'll see that the relay kicks on, and the wattage goes back up, and then it'll self-regulate again and, and kind of come back down to that 335 watts or so. And then if we take a look at the amp draw, it lives just at a, below that 3 amps, so I've been kind of seeing it live around 2.95, 2.97. It's about where the amps kind of live for the amount of draw that this thing has. Um, we'll get the heat gun back out here. We'll take another quick little peek. And then we're going to test uh, the safety shutoff thing here in just a second. And you can see those guys are reading you know, 300 and some degrees almost in some sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this towel and I'm going to actually try to cover the intake vents and the fan that's on the back side. And I'm going to try to see if I can get this thing to overheat and shut off doing it this way versus touching the very hot plate in front of that screen. Um, so I ended up doing this for almost a minute and found that I really couldn't get it to shut off, so I kind of just aborted this test. I didn't want to, you know, after I could tell that the, the temperature was actually making the coil smell a little bit weird, I kind of decided, well, yeah, that's a good place to stop. So the next heat test I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cover up the front part of the vents, and we'll take this towel and just kind of cover it up completely. Now, don't do this if you're not being safe. I have a fire extinguisher right at my feet that you can't see. I also have the front of the towel is damp. And then I also have a fire hose or just a hose outside the door just in case things really do get crazy. And the sink below me actually works as well. 
And as you can see, the watts and the amperage draw is actually starting to drop a little bit. Um, I think because the temperature is actually starting to fall on the coils. And it didn't take too long for this thing to actually shut off because I did speed up this video just a little bit. But you can see it shuts off there and that's about it. All right, what do you guys think? It's actually not a bad little heater. I use it in the bathroom here to kind of warm the thing up before I might take a shower. It makes the spouse a little bit happy. And, uh, you know, for the price, for $30, it does a pretty good job. Some people were complaining that it, it didn't seem to work, and um, I have no complaints with this. You turn it on in about mm, 7, 8 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, the bathroom's actually pretty good. Now, if it's 30 degrees outside, it's probably not going to do enough. You might need some a little bit bigger. But in the low 40s, mid 40s, that's where I was the last couple of weeks, it, uh, it did the job for the bathroom and stuff, and that's kind of really the whole reason I purchased it. For $30, I don't think you can beat it. Um, you know, the watt draw is not very much. It's only 350 watts at 3 amps, so, so roughly. And uh, for a nice little heater, you know, I, I was surprised that it took that long to actually shut off uh, for, you know, on the safety test. Um, but it still did, so that's that's good. But uh, other than that, for a good little heater, I don't think you can beat it. Now, I'm not affiliated with Amazon or anything like that. I'm not sponsored by the company. I don't make any money. I'm just doing this for fun and uh, give you guys a product that I think, I, you know, you guys might like. So if you guys like it, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you next time.